The Indian Ocean is deeply related to the life of Sri Lanka. The beautiful blue ocean contains stories of abundant fish and the Sri Lankan people who do not attempt to conquer nature, but rather live in peace with it. Leaving behind the Indian Ocean, we headed for Sri Lanka's New Year's Day. It is a joyful festival where everyone can get together and where the real power of living together exists. The Sri Lankan New Year's Day is an open festival. Sri Lanka is an island in the Indian Ocean, south of India. It can be reached via a nine-hour flight from Korea. Sri Lanka is one-third the size of the Korean Peninsula. Its capital city is Colombo. Our journey this episode begins in Colombo. Colombo, the capital city of Sri Lanka, is a port city on the southwestern coast. It became the center of Sri Lanka's economy and culture in the 17th century. We are on our way to downtown Colombo. Mid-April is the busiest time for Colombo's market. We visited Sri Lanka around mid-April in order to take part in their New Year's celebrations. This year, Sri Lanka's New Year's Day is April 14th, not January 1st. With New Year's Day approaching, another place becomes crowded along with the market. This is Gangarama Temple, one of Sri Lanka's finest temples. Built in 1885, this famous temple is widely visited by Buddhists in Sri Lanka and neighboring countries. Sri Lanka is a Buddhist nation. Around 70% of the Sri Lankan population is Buddhist. The people are not the only ones busy preparing for New Year's Day. This elephant is also getting ready to greet the New Year. Major temples in Sri Lanka always raise elephants. This comes from the story that Queen Maya, who had conceived Gautama Buddha, dreamed of an elephant. Elephants have a special place in Sri Lanka, as demonstrated by how caretakers are designated in each temple to take care of them. The first thing that greets the eye inside Gangarama Temple is the different Buddhist statues. Buddhist statues sent from China, India, and other neighboring countries have different poses and expressions. There is another thing that makes Gangarama Temple special. We followed a monk to the side of the temple. Surprisingly, we found Kata Ragama. This is the Hindu god that listens to all wishes and makes them come true. A Hindu god in a Buddhist temple. How is this possible? Most of temple they have Kataragama Deva and Vishnu Deva. Therefore, they make the uh, Deva. 
Sri Lankan Buddhism teaches that one must train oneself to find enlightenment. But it acknowledges that sometimes people earnestly want to ask the gods for something. Sri Lanka is a devout Buddhist country. However, these people do not force the religion on other people. They say that religion is about faith, not about right or wrong. New Year's Day is an event where this open mind can be most clearly observed. I've been invited by a friend to see in the New Year with a Sri Lankan family. I have prepared a small gift and thanks. I arrived a little after 3 a.m., but the family was awake. This is the time to prepare for New Year's Day rituals. The most important ingredient for food preparation is coconut. Coconut milk is the most widely used ingredient in Sri Lankan cooking. The coconut milk jar is placed on top of the small furnace prepared in the living room. At exactly at 4.06 a.m. Fire is lit in the furnace at the sound of loud fireworks. This is the first ritual of New Year's Day. There are parts of the ritual that need to be done at exactly the right moment. The coconut milk symbolizes abundance. Lighting the fire in the furnace is also a ritual, wishing for abundance instead of cold and hunger. But why is New Year's Day in Sri Lanka not on January 1st? Sri Lanka's New Year's Day is related to the sun's position. When the sun moves from the house of Pisces to the house of Aries, this is when the sun is closest to Sri Lanka. After a fire is started in the furnace, the first food prepared is milk rice. First, the rice is cooked, then coconut milk is poured on top. Milk rice is well liked among Sri Lankans. It appears not just on New Year's Day, but also on special occasions like birthdays. In Shinalese, it is called Kiribath. Sri Lankans must fast for a few hours before New Year's Day. 
애기가 지금 배고파가지고 뿌따 바득이니? 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 배가 고파가지고 이제 주워 먹으려고 그러는데 아이요 쪘다 있나? 엄마가 지금 시간이 안 된다고 먹지 말래요 Even on special days like New Year's Day, religion plays an important role. Sri Lankans pray for fortune, not to their ancestors, but to the gods of their religions. On New Year's Day, women change into good, clean clothes. This is a traditional costume called an osaria. This is usually worn by married women. At 7.05 a.m., fireworks are set off again. New Year's Day has begun. The family prays, wishing for everyone's health and safety. Seven freshly gathered ingredients are prepared and given as an offering. After the ritual, the elder of the house gives out the ritual food. I also got a taste of curry bath with the family after bringing in the New Year. After the ritual food is shared, the family members pay their respects to the head of the family. This custom is interesting because of the leaves that are given back and forth. This leaf, called betel, drives away bad fortune and is supposed to bring good health. <laughs> The biggest reason children await New Year's Day is because of the hand cell they receive. In Sri Lanka, not just the children, but also adults give and receive hand cells. The hand cell must be wrapped in betel before it is given. The amount of the hand cell does not matter. It is the heart of the person that is put in the betel leaf. This symbolizes the people's wish that everyone will do well and that they want to share their good fortune. I am lucky to be spending two New Year's Days this year, once in January in Korea and once in Sri Lanka in April. When the sun rises and it becomes morning, food and happy stories are shared. Curry bath is eaten because the white coconut milk stands for purity. To learn further about Sri Lankan New Year's customs, we went to a rural area. We can see from the entrance that the village is in a festive mood. The villagers are having a New Year's event. I went to see what the noise was about. The event seems unique considering that it's the New Year.
They are having a tug of war like Koreans do in elementary school. The villagers seem to take the competition quite seriously, considering it's a friendly event between neighbors and close relatives. This is a bread eating competition for children. And the competition for the women's game of racing with the lime on a spoon held by the mouth is also fierce. Everything is prepared by the villagers themselves. But the highlight of today's event was still to come. This game of fighting each other with pillows is also a traditional game called Kotamora. <laughs> Challenged, I cannot back out. Summoning my courage, I go up. But this young man was too nice to me. After some initial feints, I dared to make the first move. But I fell down at a soft blow, making it a short game. Just like New Year's Day in Korea a long time ago, Sri Lanka's New Year's Day was filled with good cheer. This is a New Year's Day when family and relatives can come together to wish each other happiness and share small and humble pleasures. On our way back from the New Year's event, a family catches my attention from beyond the window. The family is eating on the road. I wonder if they are out on a picnic. From the grandparents to the baby, it is a big extended family. The car is filled with baby things. The family of over 10 members has left on a journey in this car. People want to be with their families on New Year's Day, although it may be a little inconvenient. This may actually be more important than any religious meaning. This is a village of Tamil people. They also celebrate their New Year's Day in mid-April. The Tamil people make up 20% of the Sri Lankan population and they are Hindu. Their way of celebrating New Year's Day looks completely different from how the Shingalese celebrate. Mm. 
அப்படி அடுத்த ஒரு Lucky for me, I get to experience Sri Lankan New Year's Day twice. In the morning, I spent New Year's Day with a Shingalese family, and in the evening, I am spending New Year's Day at a Tamil family's home. Although they are Sri Lankan, the Shingalese and Tamils have different religions, languages and culture. Their costumes are also different. The Tamil people's culture was heavily influenced by Indian culture. Although the religion is different, the enthusiasm and expectation regarding New Year's Day is the same. Before eating dinner, the Tamil people first pray to their gods. There are many cases when Tamil people have an altar to serve their gods. Religion to the Tamil is not just faith, but a way of life. Wishes are made for a good new year by offering flowers to the gods. Marking the forehead with rice powder stands for the people's wish for an abundant harvest. The Tamil New Year's Day food is also different from the Shingalese food. Shingal is making kiriba, we are Hindu, Tamil, we are making this. Jagari rice. Jagari. 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 Rolong, which is similar to Korean rice cakes, is another standard New Year's Day food. The people here eat jagli rice and wish each other good luck. The gods and rituals might be different, but the goodness in people's hearts is just the same. <laughs> What do people need in order to coexist in peace? It is probably an attitude of accepting each other just as we are. Much like the Sri Lankans do. On the next day, a long queue forms in front of a temple near the village the day after New Year's Day. This is to keep the ritual of the second day of the new year, just like lighting the furnace and eating rice. We followed them to see what that ritual was. Histogema is a new year's custom whereby a monk puts on oil on attendees' hair. 
coconut oil and an herb called nanu are smoothed onto the hair with the fingers. Just as Koreans clean themselves in preparation of New Year's Day, Sri Lankans wash off the previous year's worries and anxiety with histagama. The New Year's holiday in Sri Lanka lasts for five to seven days. It ends after the histagema ritual the day after New Year's Day. After witnessing two similar yet different New Year's Day celebrations, we left Hanwella and headed for Nalathani further inland. Sri Pada, which has a footprint at the peak, is the most important religious mecca in Sri Lanka. We arrived at Sri Pada just after midnight. Everything was, therefore, pitch dark. However, there were quite a number of people heading towards Sri Pada. They were on their way to make their New Year's wishes. The peak stands 2,200 meters above sea level, and it usually takes four hours to reach the top. This is a rest area for people who have come on pilgrimages. Unlike on regular days, there are many families with children on their way up the mountain today. Two hours into our trek, lights upon the distant summit become visible. At the entrance to the peak are pilgrims who have already taken their place. There are Buddhists and Hindus alike. <laughs> <laughs> this is my third time up Sri Pada, which makes it more meaningful. <sighs> Sri Lankan Buddhists believe that the footprint at the top was formed when Siddhartha came to this country for the third time. <sighs> The dark sky slowly starts to reveal itself. Fortunately, we got to the peak on time. There is a small temple at the peak. Just as the Buddhists believe that the footprint belongs to Siddhartha, the Hindus believe that it belongs to Shiva. So, this place is a mecca for both religions. The Buddhists and Hindus interpret the same thing differently. Uh, uh, 
Once the sun rises, the ritual begins. It is a ritual for all who believe in God. Interestingly, none of the Sri Lankans say that the other parties are wrong. It is now time to greet the first sunrise of the new year. The people who had been resting awake. It does not need to be the first day of the new year. What is more important to them is they are seeing the sun rise from the summit of Sripada. As the darkness dissipates, a single sun rises in front of people who believe in different gods. I hope that their wishes for good weather and abundant harvest, and for an accident for a year, will reach their God. They do not ask why other people are different. They also do not say that other people are wrong. Instead, they understand and embrace each other. It is a beautiful New Year's Day.